Hari Bol. So what did we discuss in our previous class? We had a one week break. What was there last? Ah, Karam Sol. Kill you, Abhimit. Karma Yoga under the banner of... Which chapter are we? Chapter 4. Of? Bhakriti Karmati. Good. Called as? Transcendental. Transcendental knowledge. So which verse... We, which from which verse to which verse did we do that? 16 to 24. 16 to 24. 16 to 24. Very good. So what did you discuss? What was the theme? Karma Yoga, under the context of Jnana, how do we understand Karma? That was one part. That's all understood. The difference between a Karma, a Karma, and action and inaction. Karma. 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 Action and inaction. Inaction and action. We discussed karma, be karma and... No, karma, be karma and... Akarma. So what is the difference between karma, be karma and akarma? Who can summarize for us? Very nicely. Around true. What is the difference between karma, akarma and... Karma can be called as uh, when they're trying to do anything for our own sense gratification or not for the pleasure of the Lord, not directed in that sense, so it becomes karma in uh, whatever we do, good or bad. Are you sure? Anyone else? Half right. Not yet. A karma is uh, performed for whom is for Krishna. A karma is for Krishna, and the attitude in that is there is no desire for um, servitor or um, sense of sense gratification, and the result of that is we get transcendental happiness. We the way we define is the type of karmas, karma, karma, and, uh, karma. Then for whom it is performed, what is the attitude? In the karma, karma, and karma, and then the, what is the result that you draw? So, yeah. yeah so, Vikarma is, uh, it is work with attachment to self. Same as Work with attachment to self. And the attitude is in Vikarma is against the Shastras. Um, and in karma is according to Shastras, but and, and following the Vikarma. And the result of Vikarma is bad reactions, and karma is. Okay. So in short, Vikarma and Karma, the center is V. The only difference is whether I am enjoying my senses constitutionally within the realms of the constitution or I am enjoying my senses frivolously. That's all. That's the only thing. Common thing between both is my sense gratification. So I and me are in the center. Clear? Whereas in case of a karma, who is in the center? Krishna. That's the only difference. Therefore, when an activity is done with Krishna in the center of that activity, then such activity does not beget Reaction. I did not say sinful reaction. That depends on whether it is karma or karma. If the action is performed within the realms of the constitution, even if we enjoy our senses, then that's fine. We will get the results also. That is karma. We karma is going against the laws of God. So what is an example of we karma? What's an example? If you have understood, what's an example of Vikarma? Ashok, what is an example of Vikarma? What's an example of bad karma? Bad karma is called as Vikarma. Good karma is called as Karma. And no karma is called as a karma. Good, bad, no. Three words you remember. Good karma is called as Karma. Bad karma is called as Vikarma. And no karma is called as a karma. So what is an example of Vikarma? 
There are four examples which any devotee can have. Thank you very much. All of you are awake. Hari Bol. Everyone is awake. No meat eating. No illicit sex. No intoxication. No gambling. Under any circumstances, these four activities are called as weak karma and the result is only sin. If I take a gun and I go to the border and I kill the soldier who is trying to come into my country and if I take the gun and I kill a terrorist, if I am a commando and I am killing a terrorist, what will I get? I will get a medal. If I take the same gun and kill my neighbor, what will I get? 3 not 2. Correct? You cannot say. The activity is same. I have used gun there. You people gave a medal. I use same gun here. You have put me 3 not 2. 3 not 2 means Mataji will not know. 3 not 2 in India means section 302 means what? Hang, isn't it? Hang death. Hang till death. Huh? Hang till death. Yeah. So in one case you are getting a medal because you shot a terrorist. On the other hand, you shoot your neighbor, then you get... So you cannot say the activity is the same, why I am getting medal in one case and why, why am I getting punishment in this case. So most of the actions in this world are relative. But there are four activities which are absolutely sin under any circumstance. Under any circumstance, four activities are always sinful. Meat eating, illicit sex, intoxication, gambling. We can't justify that. Oh, Prabhu, you know how I am from India, you know, I am from uh, Karnataka. You know, therefore, you know, or I am from Konkan. You know, therefore, you know, I am eating meat. What to do? You know, it is our culture. It's our speciality staple diet. No, no. It is a sin. It is a sin. By the laws of Krishna. By the laws of the government, there is nothing. It's okay. Because everyone does that. So, it's okay. But from the laws of God, it is a sin. So we have to understand. So such activities are called as weak karma, which will get sinful reaction. Good karma, activities with which we get good karma are activities which are mentioned in the karma kanda section. So you do some puja, you do some religious activities in your house you know, for the well-being of people in your family. Right? You appease the demigods. So many rituals you do in the house. So those are called as good karma. What is the problem in doing good karma? The results are binding in nature. The results are binding in nature. Very good. Even if you do good karma in this world, you will have to come back to enjoy the results of good karma. Right? And if you do bad karma, then you go down to the hellish planets. Poor bad karma. Meat eating, intoxication, illicit sex, gambling. You have to go down to the hellish planet system and then evolve after that. Losing the human form of life. Good karma... Enjoy the heavenly planets and come back after some time. But again, you have to come back here. Right? But a karma is constantly engaging in activities for the pleasure of Krishna. Arjuna, what was he doing in the battlefield of Kurukshetra? He was not doing Kirtan over there. Right? He was not singing songs over there. What was he doing? He was fighting and killing. Right? Someone says, I don't want to read Bhagavad Gita because it's all about war. Right? Somebody may say like that. But such a person is ignorant. He doesn't know that sometimes war has to be waged. Hmm? Somebody came and told us that I don't, I won't read Bhagavad Gita. This was one of the people in our office, very senior person who I was talking to. I will not read Bhagavad Gita because it's all about war. The only question we asked him was, if someone, if someone removes the clothes of your wife in public, what will you do? You will pay obeisances to that fellow? You will say, no, Gandhi, remove my clothes also. Will you say like that? <laughs> will you say like that? So he said, no. I said, that is exactly what Lord Krishna did in Kurukshetra. Kill those fellows. Right? What else do you think they, should, they deserve? Right? For outraging the modesty of a woman, what do you think they deserve? Then he kept quiet. No answer. That is what was done. So sometimes, some activities, war has to be waged. In fact, even after they did that, Lord Krishna went up to them and said, okay, fine. Let us have a... He went with a peace proposal. But still those fellows were not. They outraced the modesty of a lady. On top of that, they removed all the kingdom. On top of that, when they went for a peace truce, they rejected that. What else do you expect? They wanted war. Pandavas did not want war. Who wanted war? Kauravas wanted war. The demons wanted war. Therefore, the saintly persons have to wage a 
war. It's like that. So, such activities which are performed for the pleasure of Krishna or under the instruction of the Krishna, neither get good karma nor they get bad karma. The, such activities, if we keep on doing in our life, we will not get any karma. And when you don't get any karma, then what happens at the end of lifetime? You get what is called as liberation. So that is akarma, karma and vikarma. Let's go further. Text 25. Some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them. Some yogis perfectly worship the demigods by offering different sacrifices to them. And some of them offer sacrifices in the fire of the Supreme Brahman. As described above, a person engaged in restoring duties in Krishna consciousness is also called a perfect duty or a first class instead. But there are others also who perform similar sacrifices in the worship of demigods and still others who sacrifice to the Supreme Brahma or the impersonal feature of the Supreme Lord. So there are different kinds of sacrifices in terms of different categories. Such different categories of sacrifice by different types of performers only superficially demand varieties of sacrifice. Factually, sacrifice means to satisfy the Supreme Lord Vishnu who is also known as Yajna. All the different varieties of sacrifice can be placed within two primary divisions, namely sacrifice of worldly possessions and sacrifice in pursuit of transcendental knowledge. Those who are in Krishna consciousness sacrifice all material possessions for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord, while others who want some temporary material happiness sacrifice their material possessions to satisfy demigods such as Indra, the sun god, etc. And others who are impersonalists sacrifice their identity by merging into the existence of impersonal Brahma. The demigods are powerful living entities appointed by the Supreme Lord for the maintenance and supervision of all material functions like the heating, watering and lightning of the universe. Those who are interested in material benefits worship the demigods by various sacrifices according to the varied rituals. There are, they are called or believers in many gods. But others who worship the impersonal feature of the absolute truth and regard the forms regard the forms of the demigods as temporary, sacrifice their individual selves in the supreme fire and thus end their individual existence by merging into the existence of the supreme. Such impersonalists sacrifice their time in philosophical speculation to understand the transcendental nature of the supreme. In other words, the fruitive workers sacrifice their material possessions for material enjoyment, whereas the impersonalist sacrifices his material designations with a view to merging into the existence of the Supreme. For the impersonalist, the fire altar of sacrifice is the Supreme Brahman and the offering is the self being consumed by the fire of Brahman. The Krishna consciousness person like Arjuna, however, sacrifices everything for the satisfaction of Krishna and thus all his material possessions as well as his own self, everything is sacrificed for Krishna. Thus, he is the first class yogi, but he does not lose his individual existence. What are the points here? Everything that we have written on the board for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada Ki. Class is over. <laughs> I should have turned the board over. Anyway, what do you understand? Poor <laughs> question, not a comment. Merging into the impersonal Brahman and losing your individual existence. How can we, how can a soul lose its existence? But, and the world is merging into the impersonal Brahman. Merging means 
becoming one which we don't agree with. I think it's a, like a not merging, but uh, like a, it's still individually situated in the impersonal Brahman. That's what it means. Correct. Merging Correct. means like uh, it's becoming kind of one. Correct. They think they are merging, but that individual existence is still individual. Just like there are, Prabhupada gives examples elsewhere, that there are many fishes in the ocean, right? But still a fish is a fish. Each fish has its own individual identity. Each atomic particle of water has its own individual identity. So individual identity can never be lost. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a myth to think that individual identity can be lost. No, it doesn't work that Individual identity is always there. Is Prabhupada trying to say... They are thinking they are merging and Correct. losing their existence. Correct. Correct. Yes, spot on. Let the self be consumed by the fire of Brahman. So, what does that consume mean? It's a, it's a metaphorical state, it's not a literal state. Mm-hmm. Anything else? The difference between different performances. Ways of worship, how they worship. Mayavadis are not mentioned in the Brahmavadis of the Understand that it's the same in this context? Yes. Brahmavadis. Brahmavadis and Mayavadis, same in this context. In this particular context? No. Brahmavadis. But the Mayavadis are not defined in this example. There is no mention of Mayavadis in this. Mayavadis, there is no question of merging. No, they say they are already good. Who to merge? With? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? When you say merge with God, that means somebody is God and I am merging with Him. But when I say I am God, then what can you do? Then people have to merge into you. <laughs> Correct. So that is the that is the bogus philosophy. Mayavadi. Okay, that's why they are not categorized as worshippers. That is why they are not categorized into the They don't deserve to be categorized. <laughs> <laughs> Prabhu, in context with uh, the sacrificing of material positions, does the Chaturmasa Vrat also come under the same thing? The Chaturmasya Vrat, yes, it will come under the same thing and no, it will not come under the same thing. Depends. And activity, again, good question. In the context of the previous class is... An activity per se cannot be classified in itself as akarma, vikarma, karma. It is a consciousness in which, with which you do the activity. Suppose I wish Chaturmasya. Bhagavan, I am keeping Chaturmasya because now appraisal time is coming in Infosys. I am just hypothetically taking an example. You know? I am fasting. Oh my dear Lord. Therefore, somehow, you know, that promotion is there. You know, I want to get that chair. Then what does it become? It becomes good karma because... Now you can do, you can get the promotion in different ways. You can go and do some politics and get the promotion in office. Okay, which, which means you are hurting someone and knocking someone off his chair and then sitting on that chair. So somebody is unhappy with you. So tomorrow what will happen to you? Somebody will knock you off your chair. Okay, what goes around comes around. That is the law of karma. Hmm? But at least we are not doing that. I am saying no, 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 no. I don't want to trouble anyone for my promotion. I will do one thing. I have a lot of faith in God, so I am going to do puja at home and I am going to fasting, I am going to do so that I can get promotion in office. So you are following a proper constitutional process for getting an intended result. So therefore it is getting you good karma. However, the third scenario, I am suffering from uh, so many problems in my life. I have lost my job. I have lost my health. Right? I, my whole life is topsy-turvy. And then I am doing Chaturmasya. Saying that, my dear Lord, I don't want anything from you. Just give me your bhakti. That's all. Right? Maximum you may say that whatever you want to do with me, my dear Lord, you do with me. It doesn't matter. As long as you are happy, it's fine. Use me as an instrument. Like that. Then that becomes real Chaturmasya. A karma. There is no karma. Why? Because you are doing it for the pleasure of the Lord. You are telling the Lord, I am keeping this Chaturmasya only to make you happy. Like that. Correct? Suppose we buy, you know, uh, suppose, I will give you an example. Let's say I buy a gift for my father-in-law. 
I didn't see your children. <laughs> Tell me when you are entering the car. <laughs> I bought a gift. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. I both sides are laughing. During our courtship days, no? I bought one Har Harlix. <laughs> <laughs> I bought one Harlix bottle for my father-in-law. <laughs> That is because I was not sure whether he'll accept our marriage or not. <laughs> what do you call that? Anil, is it good karma, bad karma? Or not? <laughs> Which means I'm doing an activity. Okay, now he was very happy when I brought that. But he didn't know what I was up to. <laughs> Later on he realized. Oh, this fellow is like that. Okay. So, when we approach the Lord also in that way, then he's not very pleased. But at least he's okay with you saying that at least this fellow has come to me. Chalo, de, de do isko. Like that. But he's not very happy. Will, will somebody be happy? Suppose I give you a nice gift. And you know, oh, this is a gift for you on your birthday. And by the way, you know, I wanted a loan. Will you have <laughs> Like that if I come to you, yeah, he has come. He has come for whatever he wanted. Right? Then there is a problem. If you don't ask for anything and just uh, sacrifice yourself for the God, then that's the supreme. Thing. Yes. There is something higher than not asking for anything. Not asking for anything is okay. But genuinely seeking that the Lord should be happy is one level above not asking the Lord for anything. Suppose, I, suppose let's say, Yamuna Jivan Prabhu has got children. So I suppose I... For his boy, I, I give gift. Oh, happy birthday and I give gift. And I tell him, I don't want anything from you. Like that I tell him. So fine. That's one way of telling him. He'll say, yeah, yeah, Jagannath Ram doesn't want anything from you. But then I say, I bought a gift, you know. I always wanted to see a smile on the face of your son. Then I want something. But still that makes him even more happy. So therefore, when you keep Chaturmas, one is, Oh Lord, I don't want anything. That's one thing. Another thing, Lord, I'm doing it. I want you to be happy. Just for your pleasure, I'm doing it like that. And you may undergo so many things in your life. Everything is topsy-turvy in your life. Right? But still you're doing it for, you're not thinking where my life is right now. You're only thinking pleasure of Krishna. Like that. Then you do that, then it becomes a karma. There's no reaction. Sorry, whose question was it? Your own question. Anything else? I have one question. It's like, Lord is like our father. Only to the father, uh, we can ask for whatever we want. Immaterial of being a materialistic thing or not, isn't it? That kind of intimacy when we develop, so we say that, Dad, you are my dad, you just have to give me, you have to bless me. But how do you actually relate that to whatever you are telling us? Okay. So, with dad, we can ask. With our father, we ask. Okay. But with our father, what do we have by default? With Krishna, we don't have that. That's the problem. That's the only difference. If we actually see him as a father, you can go and ask him. You can go and shout at him. What is it? I told you ten times, you are not giving. Right? Actually, you can do. But that is a higher mood. That is a very high mood. Different mood. Where you are genuinely... But you are also very... Anything that happens in the life of Krishna, you are always tuned to that, always. For example, am I not always, are we not always tuned to what's happening in our father's life? Most of us are. Right? We are tuned to it. But are we always thinking, even while in office, are we thinking, what's hap- what is what will Krishna be doing right now? Has he eaten? How many times do you think? Okay. So, when it comes to giving, we are not thinking him as a father. Only when it comes to receiving him, we are thinking him as a father. So, that is not the real relationship. Father means the same relationship should be there. Same intensity we have for our material father. Many more times we should have for the supreme father. But that is the process of Krishna consciousness. Now, that mood is not to be cultivated. It's already there. By chanting process, that mood will come out automatically. All the dirt, when it goes away, that natural love will be there. Because all of us have a natural constitutional rust with the Lord. It's already there. We don't, you don't have to bring it from outside. You don't have to go to the market and say, Kidar Milta Hai. No, you don't have to do that. By the process of chanting, the dirt is covering that relationship. So, 
the chanting process is clearing up that dirt inside our heart. And once you reach a particular stage, typically we did a seminar on Raganuga Bhakti recently with Kesha Prabhu. Kesha Prabhu told us that when you reach the platform of Nishtha, at that time then that natural love starts manifesting within the heart. Nishtha means what? What are the different stages in Bhakti? The, the first stage is what? Shraddha. Having faith. Right? But having faith then what? One sits at home saying that, oh no, I have I have a lot of faith in God. Many people simply sit at home. You know? You know we'll watch T20. 2020, right? And when you ask them, why do you come to the I have a lot of faith in God. That's a very low level. Next level is what? If you have faith in God, then what are you doing about it? Right? Then come and associate with devotees. Right? That shows your faith and love for God. Associating with devotees and avoiding the association of non-devotees. That shows the faith. Sadhu, sadhu Sangha. Right? <coughs> Then third level is what? After associating with devotees, what do we do? Just go and eat in each other's houses. What do we do? Bhajana Kriya. We chant together. Right? And we perform devotional activities together. Right? We hear Bhagavatam together. We take Prashadam together. Right? Hmm? Tushyan teacher, Raman teacher. We discuss pastimes of Krishna consciousness together. Dadati Prati Granati. We go to people's houses. We invite people to our houses. No. and then discuss Krishna Katha and have Prashada. So many activities we do together. And then by doing those processes, we go to the next stage of Bhakti. What is that? Anartha Nivriti, which is what? All that is impure inside the heart, like lust, anger, envy, greed, pride, all those things go away. Right? And then that bhajan what we are doing, that sadhana what we are doing, it becomes consistent. Right now, our sadhana is like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. Right? It's all situational. Like that. Somebody may say, no, 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 I have been chanting 16 rounds. But the question is, do you always complete your 16 rounds in the morning? Or no, Prabhu, depends. Depends on what? Depends on what time I went to bed the earlier day. Depends. Depends on my health also. So our sadhana is right now? Like this. Depends on my mood also. I had a fight with my wife yesterday. So I'm not in a mood to chant right now. I'll do it later. <laughs> or vice versa. My husband irritated me. I'm not in a mood to chant. Not like that. Okay. So our sadhana right now is very dependent on external circumstances. We are approaching our Supreme Father depending on circumstances. So that is our problem. But when we come to the platform of Nishtha, then... It's just there every day, regardless of any circumstance. And at that stage, when we do, when our life, our sadhana becomes like that, then that relationship with the Lord, that rust, starts slowly manifesting in our heart. Till that time, only the cleaning process is going on. Just like, for example, um, morning light. Morning light, what happens? The sun is there, but you darkness is there. In, the night is now going away and the dawn is coming. So that there is a hue in the sky. You know that sun is going to come in few minutes like that. But it's still not come. But it's all, you know, there are all indications of the sun coming now. No? Because it's reddish in color, then there are different, different colors in the sky. And then pop, it comes out and shines bright like that. So that is that enlightenment which comes after Nishtha. But around that platform, this is what is happening. This is what is happening. And when that enlightenment comes then you don't have to uh, artificially do anything you don't have to you don't have to do your sadhana based on the fear of scriptures scriptural injunction it is automatically you will see krishna everywhere like that that's called as uddipan uddipan means what mahaprabhu saw you know one hill and he ran towards it saying that this is lower than hill like that or when you see a Kadamba tree, immediately you will start thinking of Krishna. Oh, Lord Krishna was playing flute under the Kadamba tree. Hmm? When you see a river, you will think that, oh, this is Ganga. Oh, you, you are immediately reminded of Krishna. Whatever you see, you are reminded of Lord Krishna. Like that. That stage is, comes after that. Does this make sense? Which question was the answer? <coughs> what was it? Yes. So therefore that mood is completely different. It will come only, it will manifest at a later stage. Right now, saying that Lord Krishna, my little Laddu Gopal and all that, those are all more sentimental. 
you can roam around here and there let do go par but they are all little bit it's not that it should not be done but we have to understand we should not take it too seriously they are prabhu i am in vatsale rasi <laughs> not like that okay hmm? that rasa will manifest at a, after that we have fight with devotees and we are going around roaming around with so many things so that's not the way it will that stage will automatically come when that mood will be revealed by the syllables of the hare krishna maha mantra that ras will be revealed to us automatically till that time we don't try to imitate those things hmm? all right so in text 25 is all about classification of sacrifices hmm? sacrifices can be classified as into two types sacrifice of worldly possessions and sacrifice in pursuit of transcendental knowledge that's what prabhupada says hmm? and then what what we have done is just put it in a table whatever was written in the purport it's just there in this table the entire gist of the purport so there are there are five variables here worshipper sacrifice goal faith and definition hmm? so demigod worshipper hmm? what is the sacrifice that he does he sacrifices his material, material possessions what he will do okay i want to do kumbha abhishek or i want to do ganapati homa in my house then what you will do you will get all the ingredients for doing that right you will pay the pujari the vadyar will come home you will pay okay chalo tumko itna 1000 rupees 1000 rupees 1000 rupees hmm? then you will get whatever you will call some friends of yours you will spend money in buying some prasadam bhoga for that yagya hmm? you will buy uh, fruits vegetables okay to be offered in the yagya right you will arrange for sticks whatever whatever you will pay for the material you will pay for the brahmanas everything you will utilize your house you will sacrifice some enjoyment in your house like that so that is what the demigod worshipper does he sacrifices his material possessions but what is his goal his goal is sense enjoyment in accordance with the scriptures ultimately goal hoy hai and i want to enjoy Right? He wants some results out of it. He is looking for good results out of it. Hmm? Looking for dhanam dehi, putram dehi, all that. Hmm? Give me wealth, give me good chasan, give me health, right? Give me promotion, give me prestige in society. Right? All these things is what he will ask after doing all that yagya hmm? at the end of the day. Hmm? And what is his faith? The faith of a demigod? Believe in all gods. Sometimes we ask people, you know. you believe in krishna he believe in all gods <laughs> as if krishna devotees are what is that fanatics and the other rest of the world is the liberals <laughs> correct it doesn't work in every context everything that you say that you believe in everything doesn't you can't say who is your wife this is my wife it is also my wife all are my wife i am liberal broad minded it doesn't work in this context so in all context it is just because you believe in all doesn't mean that it is applicable it's something great that you are said it all depends on the context right so lord krishna is saying bhagavad gita he is saying very clearly vyavasaithmika buddhi eke kurunanda bahu shaka hi anantascha buddhayo avyavasayana which means the devotion has to be single pointed single focused not that on tuesday i am doing you know sai baba on wednesday i am doing durga on thursday i am doing uttamari aman on friday you know i am worshiping krishna on saturday you know saturday prabhu weekend no sachin tendulkar monday salman khan sunday and then again back monday sai baba tuesday you know something it will not work like that nothing is going to happen in the life we will just float around like this that's all we will think you know the beauty is we think whatever good is happening in our life is because of that what we are doing but we are foolish we don't understand that whatever good is coming in our life is anyway coming because of our good karma right and when bad comes then you will say oh i was worshiping so many people you know and still this thing happened in my life therefore you know what i'll do i'll not worship all these people i'll worship new set of people okay abhi usko nikal diya bas is out i worshiped you you didn't give me the results what i wanted god you are out new god any new gods <laughs> go and ask the neighbor he say no 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 hum log ne wo kiya tha you know kali worship kiya tha humne first class hai mera husband ko bhi promotion mila so acha hum bhi kali worship karte this is what is happening 
व्यवसायात्मिका बुद्धी एक एक गुरु नंदा ना बहु शाखा बहु शाखा मीन्स वर्ड शाखा मीन्स ब्रांचेस बहु शाखा मेनी मेनी ब्रांचेस कभी इधर कभी उधर इट इल नॉट वर्क वी हैव टू रियली अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज भक्ति फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्चर्स भक्ति कैन बी डन ओनली टू विष्णु टू नो बडी एल्स हु इज सेंग दैट आई एम नॉट सेंग स्क्रिप्चर्स आर सेंग भक्ति इज ओनली मेड फॉर विष्णु All the demigods, Devi Devatas, they are all working under him, having given so many. They are given different, different responsibilities in this material world. But the supreme personality of Godhead is who? Vishnu. Everything is working under his direction. Like that. So the demigod, the 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 demigod worshippers, they don't know that. They'll say, "Ah, oh, amlo to sabko mante," or they'll come and tell you, "Tum iska naala hai, iske liye tum Krishna bolte." It's a famous. Many people come and tell us that. I also used to say that. <laughs> When my friend you know, during MBA days, he was telling me, my, I also t- I told the same statement. Hey, you miss how hard I say, 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 on top of that bhagavad gita because my house was near the highway no mumbai express highway so all that no thing was kept. sorry hindi so he said if you don't read the bhagavad gita at least remove it once in a while and dust remove the dust and put it back he said my friend so it's like that so we worship so many demigods like that no no focus so such people are called as what bahu ishwara vadis bahu shaka bahu ishwara vadis too many gods they propose the second one who are these people slightly more intelligent than the first category why the second fellow is more intelligent than the first fellow because the first fellow is planning to be in the cycle of at least the second fellow is trying to get out of that therefore he is little bit more intelligent right the first fellow is inside the jail so president is asking him what do you want what he is asking He is saying, "Can you put a fan? Barabar nahi chalta hai. <laughs> fan is not working properly in the jail. Okay. Tube light is not. No, see that light is not working inside the jail. No, something like that. They are not putting enough ghee on the chapatis when they give in the jail. Huh? They are giving. They are asking us to break rocks, but no, rocks break rocks. But it's not sharp tool is not there. Can you give sharp tool? <laughs> This is the. These are the blessings they are asking. What is an intelligent man? What will he ask? Let's see. Take me out of the jail. You will ask. Not how to be comfortable inside the jail. De- using different tools by which you can work very hard inside the jail. Like that. So the first people are the ones who are inside the jail and asking for material benedictions out of foolishness. That's why Lord Krishna says only fools worship the demigods for material benedictions. It does not mean. that we don't that devotees don't respect the demigods please understand devotees actually show more respect to devi devatas than the people who worship them today why because devotee will not go to lord ganesh temple and ask him lord ganesh please remove vigna you know my son is not getting into melbourne high school admission can you please do something you are magic and remove the vigna vinayaka or uh, that boss has been harassing me can you please remove that obstacle from my life so that i can grow in the organization vigna vinayaka So devotees don't go like that. When devotee goes to Ganesh temple, what do devotees talk with Ganesh? They'll say, "Oh, my dear Ganpati, what a glorious Vaishnava devotee you are! Because you scripted the Sri Mat Bhagavatam, because of which we have devotion to Lord Krishna. When we go like that, then Lord Ganesh is much more pleased than those lakhs of people who are standing in the queue." For 24 hours, 30 hours to take his darshan, and at the end of the day, only come for asking him something cheap, isn't it? Suppose I wait outside your house for 30 hours, and after that I come to you and I ask you for 20,000 dollars. Are you going to be very happy that I waited for 30 hours, or are you going to think, oh, he has actually he waited not for me, but for himself he waited. So that is not bhakti. Just because you waited in a queue doesn't mean you are devot- devotional. Right? It's what why you are going there to the first place that decides whether it's bhakti or whether it's a trade. I give you ten rupees archana plate, you give me another thousand dollars worth that. So like that. So the demigod worshippers are there, higher than them, more intelligent than them are the impersonalists. The impersonalists are people who don't don't who know that 
there is no point in breaking rocks inside the jail of material existence let us escape so what do they do what kind of sacrifices they do generally they stay away from all material possessions because it's all maya at the end of the day if you actually see everything material is maya it's illusion right so you stay away from that don't get too much entangled because jnana tells them the difference between matter and spirit so for them everything is difference between matter and spirit so they only pursue what is spirit they reject everything that is material so that is the sacrifice they sacrifice their own self means what what do you mean by that sacrifice their own self they sacrifice their material designations and individuality it is mentioned what do you mean by that which means they simply understand that they are not the body what is the identity of most of us i am indian i am west indian i am telugu i am kannada correct right? i am ayer i am ayyangar i am tengale i am vadagale <laughs> like that i am gujarati you know, i am marwadi this is our identification and whatever activities we do also is based on this identification right when we come to melbourne for the first time for example you know i will go and search you know any tamil sangam is there nearby that like that right? i am going and searching the chinese fellow is also landing he'll say any chinese here like that he'll go to the chinese uh, corner and then buy a house nearby that like that okay so the, the, why we do why we act the way we act because of our identity who do we think we are if i have a strong identity that i am indian then i will associate with all indians by that association i will do that correct and and but the problem is that association is that that identity of ours is false it's not true simple example simple example hmm? when we come out of india what do we do where indians live but when we go to india what happens where <laughs> kannadigas live <laughs> correct but if we live in bangalore where all kannadigas are living then what we seek then where it people are living or where people from my company are living you know something like that right and if it's a colony of people from your own company then what do we do where do people of my same level live <laughs> oh he is also canadian he is also indian he is also in the profession but i am manager i'll, I'll deal with like that. so what's happening now whatever identity we had outside of india now that identity is not enough for our satisfaction now we want sub identity sub sub identity sub 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 identity like that isn't it so many people do like that they once uh, you know gaurang prabhu was mentioning i mentioned in the earlier class also this point that one boy and girl in new zealand you know they had illicit sex and the girl got pregnant yeah? after that the boy's parents came to maharaj and they are asking that you know maharaj what to do now you know, actually we are from brahman brahman family the girl is not brahman family <laughs> gaurang prabhu tells that no as if the activity was very brahmanical that <laughs> whatever he wanted to do he is doing then they are saying that i am brahmin and i am not brahmin so this is nonsense then you use your identity for your selfish purposes like that then why did he do that correct in the first place so this is so all these identities are are hypocritical and all these identities are an illusion the only real identity is what that we are soul we are spirit soul in this life time yesterday i was talking to you know maria in office almost for uh, 30 minutes we were talking about krishna consciousness it was very receptive so we were talking about identities so this identity is very very powerful that i am from which country right which geography etc so she was asking me which religion do you follow we had some conversation okay, which started somewhere and went somewhere else but you know she asked me which religion do you follow i said i don't follow any any sectarian religion as so what do you mean by that so i said i asked her, which religion you follow she says christianity i said our religion accommodates everything and christianity also comes from that super set of religion then she asked me how then i told her that jesus christ from whom christianity came what did he say towards the end there are many more things my dear romans that i want to tell you but you guys are not ready for it that means he wanted to tell something more but he didn't tell right so whatever he told that is christianity but whatever he also wanted to tell was also actually christianity 
so we cannot say christianity is an incomplete religion we can't say that because jesus christ knew what he wanted to say it was just that he was not allowed to say that so whatever he was saying was that sanatana dharma that religion of loving god he wanted to tell that he wanted to expound on that more and more right but what happened people have taken a very narrow view of that and people are fighting you are christian and jew and this you are this so all the identities are bogus so but the gnani the person who has got transcendental knowledge he understands that he is spirit soul the spirit soul in this lifetime may be born in philippines in the next and therefore he will be supporting philippines right or let's take cricket where all of us get very emotional right in this lifetime what is happening i'm saying oh sachin tendulkar when he hits a four against pakistan bowler i'm very happy but next lifetime i can be born in pakistan then what do i do who do i support then then when tendulkar is hitting a four then i am not very happy oh my god bakkar ko maar diya hai usne like that so two people on the opposite sides of one imaginary line are having imagination that i am this line and i am that line few years before it was all one country correct there was no pakistan it was all one country now if you go back and back like that in geography then it is mentioned in the shrimad bhagavatam that the whole universe was only one called as bharatvarsh not india bharatvarsh was just called ruled by maharaj bharat now then continental drift happened and so many things happened different different people settled down in different different places even if you see today what's happening in your in andhra pradesh you are seeing that no somebody is saying i am what telangana somebody is saying i am secunderabad whatever i don't understand that but huh? andhra okay so till yesterday everything was one suddenly today everything is different two people are fighting based on one line which does not exist the line doesn't exist anywhere somebody is in somebody's mind this line exists right so therefore all our identities are born out of human beings greed it is not given by krishna so we cannot blame him oh lord a hey, parvadigar tu agar hai to duniya mein jhagda kyun hai you know if you are there my dear lord then why there is war he didn't create any line we create a line and we start fighting what he will do he didn't create that line isn't it so the so this impersonalist he understands that all this nonsense which is happening in the world all the misery which is happening in the world is a, is a result of so many imaginary lines and the result of so many illusory identities so he is better one step above the demigod worshiper therefore what he does he rejects he sacrifices all these material designations his only designation is what i am spirit soul correct and then what he does his goal is what to merge into the supreme spirit which is called as brahman the supreme spirit is called as brahman so he wants to just merge into that and get out of the material world that's all and for him all the forms are what temporary because form means what is coming through maya brahman coming in contact with mode of material nature is a form for that person okay so forms are temporary such a person is called as what brahmavadi he sees everything as brahman as manifestations of brahman all forms also he see as he is as manifestation of the formless whereas a devotee what does he know he understands that that formlessness comes from form right because there is form there is a word in the dictionary called as form less so form cannot come from formlessness formlessness comes from form that's the switch that's a mental switch which a devotee makes that is where it differentiates impersonalist and devotee both are intelligent both want to get out of the material world both know that they are the spirit soul both do not have false identities but still one only thinks that he is spirit soul whereas the other regards the form aspect of the lord and tries to develop rasa like mother ji said one of the five mukhya rasas whereas the maya brahmavadi is not developing any rasa he is just merging into the brahman and what happens to the brahma to the such a person who merges into brahman after some time prabhupad says what happens to them they get bored because in brahman there is no activity to do right so he is searching for activity somewhere right? and and then what happens for doing activity where you have to come you have to either go up there or you have to come down but to go up there what do you need you need a human form which will which which is the first verse of the next class what is that 
ತದ್ವಿಧಿ ಪ್ರಣಿಪಾತೇನ ಪರಿಪ್ರಶ್ನೆನ ಸೇವೆಯ ಉಪದೇಕ್ಷಾಂತಿ ತೇನ್ಯಾನ ಜ್ಞಾನಿನ ತತ್ವದರ್ಶಿನ ಟು ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಅ ಗುರು ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಸೊ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಹ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಯು ಹ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ಅ ಗುರು ನೋ ನೌ ನಾ ವಾಟ್ ಯು ಡೂ ಗುರು ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ನಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಗುರು ನಾ ಫಾರ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ಯು ಡೂ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಸೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಸೊ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ಸಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೇ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಡೂ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗ ವಾಟ್ ಅಪನ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಇನ್ಸೈಡ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅಪನ್ಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾರದ್ ಮುನಿ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೀ ಮೀ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಸೊ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಯೋಗಿ ಬಟ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಸರ್ವ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಂಡ ಭ್ರಮಿತೆ ಕೋಣ ಭಾಗ್ಯವಾನ್ ಜೀವ್ ಗುರು ಕೃಪಾ ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಪಾಯ ಭಕ್ತಿಲತಾ ಬೀಜ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿಲತಾ ಬೀಜ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ದ ಸೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೋಲ್ಡ್ ಸೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಅ ಗುರು ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಡೌನ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಅ ಗುರು ಅಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಗುರು ದೆನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಭೂತ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನಾತ್ಮ ನ ಸೋಚತಿ ನ ಕಾಂಕ್ಷತಿ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಲೆಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಕರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಲೇಯರ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಮ ಸರ್ವೇಶು ಭಕ್ತೇಶು ಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಲಭತೆ ಬಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ಲಾಟ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದೆನ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಈಸಿಲಿ ಅಟೆಂಡ್ ಟು ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಎಸ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಎಸ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಸೈಡ್ ಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಲಭತೆ ಎಸ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬೈ ಸರ್ವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಕೆನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮವಾದಿ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಕರ್ಮ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಫ್ ಅಕರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೇ ದೇ ಕೆನ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಹೌ they are bound to karma by uh, karma or vikarma for their existence or for their sustenance in this world so how do they then get liberation from the brahmavadis how do they get liberation yeah because brahmavadis still acknowledge the impersonal feature of the lord okay they still externally a brahmavadi may perform the same activities as a devotee does hmm? but his goal is brahman not bhagavan he still acknowledges the impersonal feature of the lord at the end of the day please understand the absolute truth can be understood in three features brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti shabda okay. three features so are there he is just attracted to one feature of the lord okay. so in, in a way they are also performing a karma right? yes prabhupad says that brahma that impersonalists are also coming under the classification of transcendentalists transcendentalist means what beyond the three modes of material nature so beyond the three modes of material nature means a karma but that is still quite not there akarma should eventually lead to rasa highest is rasa not simply you know it should be rasa we have to develop that rasa for the lord personal rasa okay so devotee he he sacrifices respects and sometimes even sorry what is the sacrifice respects hmm? what does the devotee sacrifice what does the devotee sacrifice everything ego everything devotion yeah. in one sense yeah the sacrifice of a devotee means what that he is utilizing everything in the service of krishna that is the sacrifice of course the devotee does many sacrifices it is said that the greatest sacrifice is what preaching preaching is a greatest sacrifice which a devotee undertakes for the lord so a devotee what does he do the, the reason it is given like this is because the impersonalist is what he is doing he is rejecting matter he is not dealing with matter but the devotee deals with matter and uses it in the service of krishna a karma kandi deals only with matter for sense gratification an impersonalist does not deal with matter only deals with spirit a devotee deals with matter for the pleasure of supreme spirit that is the difference goal is what satisfaction of lord krishna through service faith is what what's the devotee's faith lord krishna is the absolute supreme personality of god a devotee has faith in the personal form of the lord he has attraction rati towards the personal form of the lord hmm? such a person is called as a vaishnava chapter 7 and 8 sorry 7 and 9 they elaborate further on demigod worship so when we come to those chapters we'll talk more about demi demigod worship hmm? any questions
in the fire of the senses look on the bro ಅನುಕೀರ್ತನ He restrains himself from the vibrations of material sounds. And his hearing, he is engaged in the transcendental sound vibrations of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Similarly, the householders who have some license for sense gratification perform such act with great restraint. Sex life, intoxication, meat eating or general tendencies of human society. but the regulated householder does not indulge in unrestricted sex life and other sex gratification marriage on the principle of religious life is therefore current in our civilized human society because that is the way for restricted sex life this restricted and unattached sex life is also a kind of ethic because the restricted householder sacrifices his general tendency towards sex gratification for higher are you going to shift it to somebody who doesn't have a bhagavad gita doesn't have a bhagavad gita but you are here sure last two questions any points all ashramas are meant for self realization yes anything else you are not tired today how oh, is this room stuffy yeah. is open the window or something i don't know please don't go to sleep in the room <laughs> ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚಾರಿ show bhaji he is not talking about mithya charis you remember we saw saints and swindlers yeah. so he is talking about those brahmacharis who genuinely want to pursue bhakti not about those who simply you know wear a saffron robe and cheat the public why is the broker saying that only brahmacharis sacrifice uh, their senses to the fire of mental control because even grahastha are actually uh, sacrificing right so that they sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control yeah you have to sacrifice the object of the senses in the fire of the senses okay we'll come to that that's what we're going to discuss this hold hold your question anything else okay so the lord here is explaining that sacrifices have to be done according to one's position in the varana and ashrama the goal of what is the goal of varna ashrama dharma yes what is the perfect yogi who is the perfect yogi who is the perfect yogi who has developed love for god so the whole purpose of varna ashrama dharma is samasiddhir haritoshanam ಅಥವಾ ಪುಂಬೀರ್ ದ್ವಿಧ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ವಿಭಾಗಶಃ 
सो अनुष्ठिस्तस्य धर्मस्य समसिद्धिर हरितोषम दिस इज फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 1 सो दैट इज द गोल ऑफ ऑल वर्णाशी सो ऑल सैक्रिफाइसेस दैट आर डन शुड बी इन अकॉर्डेंस विद वंस वर्णा एंड आश्रम एंड शुड बी फॉर द प्रेजर ऑफ हरि लॉर्ड हरि सो हियर प्रोपर इज राइटिंग the lord krishna is mentioning that the unadulterated brahmachari sacrifices the hearing process and the senses in the fire of sense control let's understand with examples a good example is the chopati temple in bombay now the brahmachari and this is true of many other temples also so please don't misunderstand it's not about just one temple but this is a, just an example that i'm taking which struck me so the brahmachari's main duty is what Why do the brahmacharis join the ashram? What do they do when brahmacharis join the ashram? New. Correct. Patan patan. Main is hearing. First they have to hear. First job mainly you just sit and hear. That's all. Attend the morning program. Go for that. Hear Bhagavatam class. The brahmachari when he joins the temple doesn't start giving classes. He has to spend many years in hearing before he can go out and preach. Like that. So the brahmacharis main duty is hearing and performing and chanting. Hare Krishna. anukirtan chanting as prescribed by the acharya the difference between kirtanam and anukirtanam is what kirtanam means performing kirtanam anukirtanam means performing kirtanam as performed by the acharyas for example some people come and say you know uh, prabhu i am chanting when i am driving in the fingers like that hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram <laughs> is this okay because you said that chanting tatra tatra pita niyamita smarane na kala there are no rules and regulations for chanting prabhu i am chanting in the bathroom is that okay whenever i go to toilet i am always chanting hey like that so what is the answer answer is yes you will chanting will not get polluted because you are chanting in the toilet chanting doesn't become a polluted activity but chanting will not give its best results in the toilet correct that's not the real place where you can really meditate on the lord isn't it correct so what is right? so that, and that's not the way the acharya has chanted yes i agree you may say that you know gaur kishor das baba ji maharaj chanted in the toilet why he did that because he was frustrated with people coming and asking him you know things which are irrelevant for devotional life so he wanted to get out of you know association of these mundane people who used to disturb his sadhana so he locked himself in a go went into a public you know into a latrine and there he started spending full day he used to do sadhana like that so nobody will disturb him there that is a different issue but we are not quite there right now right and you actually we don't need to go to the latrine to chant right so we are chanting as the acharyas have prescribed so what are the acharyas have prescribed chanting should be done in the morning hours then we can't say no 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 i will not do it then it will not give the benefits this is prescribed by the acharya so there is a difference between kirtanam and anukirtanam anukirtanam means as prescribed by the acharya then it will give full results take the medicine as prescribed by the physician oh i can i have problem you know stomach upset so i have constipation so doctor ne bola ek hi lenega let me take full thing you know <laughs> what will happen then you, you know what will happen after that correct so take the dosage as But then I'm taking medicine. No, I took five tablets instead of one. No, take the medicine as prescribed by the physician. Anu kirtan. Not to argue. If the acharyas have said do something in a particular way, then we don't argue. No, no, no. But my opinion is like this. Who cares about our opinion? Isn't it? Yeah, we can have opinions, but we'll remain in the material world with our opinions. Right? We have to come back many lifetimes just because we have opinions. so hare nam anukirtan so brahmachari's prime duty is hearing and following in the footsteps of senior devotees so in the chopati temple for example the moment a brahmachari enters he is given a person who is called as his counselor immediately he is under somebody so a section of the brahmachari is for example under gorang prabhu a section of the brahmachari will be under gor gopal prabhu a section will be under radha gopinath prabhu like that they are all channelized like that sometimes there is a hierarchy there then Radha Gopinath Prabhu may have three devotees under him who are sub heads, and then the brahmacharis will fall under that. So there is lot of personal care, you know, like that, like that. Okay. So that is an example. Now all the brahmacharis who come there, where do they come from? 
can they can you say that you know oh i am i am a high school uh, you know i have failed school you know so therefore i don't know sab maya hai school mein fail ho gaya i have failed in education i tried little bit sports also you know i just failed there you know? i am just look up good for nothing so prabhu i have just come to the temple so i am just thinking that as all maya nobody recognizing let's come become brahmachari is it like that no all the brahmacharis who are joining the temple they are highly educated number one they are very good in their studies most of the brahmacharis many of them are iit you know nine pointers high cgpa scores like that many of them are computer science from iit bombay these are the quality of brahmacharis who come right big big institutes many of them are doctors who come and join us brahmacharis not only after their education they have to undergo work experience they have to go and work in the corporate world then they have to come and join us brahmachari so they know what life is outside they know what struggle is outside right and when you go to the corporate world then what happened you are tested with money you start earning money the moment you start earning money then you want that to continue right that's why many times when you are doing a job it's very difficult to give up a job because you are getting money out of it right now if they can give up all that and then for krishna consciousness sake they can come to the ashram yes that means they had an opportunity to succeed in the material world they chose not to because of higher love for krishna so they didn't come to bhakti just because they couldn't do anything else in life they could have done but they chose not to and that is the filter criteria for brahmacharis entering the ashram so when they come here they are engaged put under senior devotee their main duty is hearing so therefore when they come with such a background then that is called as unadulterated then you are not coming into the ashram to do some politics or to you know get some power because you already that's why they had to work there you you finish all that there itself and come then you want to come like unadulterated brahmacharis so and then they come here and what are they told the first thing they are told is no unnecessary dealings with the opposite sex no need to discuss too much with mata ji do you have any service they are told unless you have a service there is no reason to discuss with any mata ji so they are they are given the practice of how to deal with women no unnecessary dealings for the purpose of preaching yes you can deal with the lady but no frivolous dealings after that no sitting joking and talking this that etc etc no right even if something is even if kartal is required and mata ji is having kartal right then there are other ways asking a senior devotee or something like that you can make some other arrangement or if you want to if you see mata ji is having some problem then the brahmachari doesn't go to her and say mata ji you have problem aapke aankhon mein aansu no not like that no not the bollywood type no no now i have come the knight in shining armor to solve your problem no and then therefore then after that you know they will start saying that pata hi nahi chala kab ho gaya no no i i was mata ji was pouring out to me and i was listening to her and i don't know when it all happened prabhu now i want to enter grihastha ashram no it doesn't work like that so if you don't have business don't deal very simple and adulterated brahmachari no need to cut it there itself cut it right why are you coming to the ashram you are coming to develop your krishna consciousness if you don't have character then how can you be a vaishnava one has to build character so the character is built by discipline strict discipline unadulterated brahmacharis under the care of a senior devotee and the atmosphere itself is such that there is nothing much for sense gratification you can't do anything for sense gratification so either you have to be in service or you take rest yes there are provision for sports or whatever those kind of activities are perfectly fine but not sense not frivolous sense gratification now when these brahmacharis eventually after training few years in the ashram even in our temple you know, we have excellent brahmacharis we have gopavarnesh prabhu naishtika brahmachari right excellent stars we have nanda mandir prabhu then we have uh, you know bhakti sar prabhu we have adrian prabhu you know, these people they have worked very very hard they they have significant contribution to the preaching movement in this temple of course they have different talents some have talents in giving bhagavatam class some have ca- talents in catering program but invariably all of them have worked very hard they have served the lord in their own way they have been a part and parcel of the temple they have performed sadhana in line with what prabhupada has prescribed and some of them what happens after some time they had a desire 
I will accept Grihastha Ashram. They have laudably accepted Grihastha Ashram, which is perfectly fine. And such people are called as Grihastha Brahmacharis. Though they are in the Grihastha Ashram, they are still as good as any Brahmachari because the, the purpose of marriage was not to enjoy the wife's body. The purpose of the marriage was what? To serve Krishna together. Some people have that kind of an... Some people have an aptitude that no, I'll, I just want to you know, take sannyas. But some others, they still want to serve Lord Krishna. But the institution of Grihastashram is more conducive for them to serve. It is better not to be a brahmachari. No? Sorry, it's better to accept Grihastashram than to sit as a brahmachari and think, Oh my God, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. I am always thinking of you know, uh, uh, Madhuri Dikshit in my mind. You know? And then sitting in a saffron robe and thinking about that. Madhuri Dikshit is a famous Bollywood hero. You know? How do you know? <laughs> She's very popular. Then. <laughs> I didn't know how popular Bollywood is. Anyway. So the mind is meditating on the opposite sex. But the clothes are saffron. There is no point. Better remove that, put white and marry and serve the Lord. Remove that disturbance out of your life. Hmm? So the whole idea of Grihastha Ashram is remove that disturbance and have a Grihastha Ashram where you have regulated sense gratification. Rupad uses that word. What does he say? Regulated householders. Regulated householders means what? Yes. There is in the Grihastha Ashram, the husband and wife have can unite. But that should be regulated, not unregulated. If it becomes unregulated, then what will happen? Then the respect is lost for each other. The whole purpose is how to enjoy it with each other's body. That's all. The husband is not working, looking at the wife as a human being. The wife is not looking at the husband as a human being. Worst this, they are not looking at each other as devotees. Just enjoy. Like that. And the whole, whole life will be centered around how to do that enjoyment. Like devotees, what is the least important room for a devotee? In the house, what is the least important room for a devotee? The bedroom. There is nothing to be done there. Correct? Because the consciousness of a devotee is like that. That is the least important room. What is the most important room? A kitchen. The, a kitchen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Why? Yes. You are right. Yes. The kitchen and hall. Yes. Yes. The kitchen and hall. Why? Because the kitchen is for preparing food for the pleasure of Krishna. Devotees you eat only prasadam. Right? So the kitchen is an important room and then the hall is an important room. Why? Because we have altar in the hall. Devotees don't keep altar in you know in some corner in the closet. No? Where is God in your house? Oh, Prabhu, shelf <laughs> No. The God is the he's the owner of the house. Incidentally, I am there in that house. That is the mood of a Vaishnava. Right? So he's very much in the front room. Like that. Right? So bedroom is just oh take rest, that's all. And even if a devotee unites, then the devotee knows that the purpose of union with the opposite sex is to beget children. Not just go on and on and on. So that is important. So having got this kind of a brahmachari training, then when such a brahmachari adopts Grihastashram, it becomes easy to follow, much easy to follow these principles. Then if someone were not to be trained in brahmachari at all, so that's so there's a sacrifice. So some sacrifice the hearing process and the senses in the fire of mental control, and others sacrifice the object of the senses in the fire of the senses. So some abstain from any sense gratification with the opposite sex. Some indulge in regulated sense gratification, but take the responsibility, bear Krishna conscious children, and deliver them from the planet. So that is the difference. Like, 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 is that what it means that the others sacrifice objects of senses in the higher of senses? And wherever you read sacrifice, within bracket always let that program run your own mind for the pleasure of Krishna. For the pleasure of Krishna. So devotees accept Grihastha Ashram for the pleasure of Krishna. Why? Because they believe that they can serve more effectively in the Ashram than not being in the Ashram. Because all of us have different... They are all different. We have different natures. Okay. 
Any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. What about Ravana Prastha? Shama 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 Sh
the only prayer is oh lord i am a fool i have come here to this place now now i have to spend 8 hours in this place right let whatever happen be for your pleasure if i have to become a fool in office so be it if you are happy with it <coughs> if i have to become a king in office today if you are happy then you make me a king no problem but whatever happens i am it's for you nothing mine aham krishnaya idam na mama in that mood we go to work with a sense of responsibility with a sense of detachment beyond that you don't get entangled too many too much with with everyone and obviously what do we do at workplace we constantly look out for people who are very favorable to krishna consciousness and we try to spread chaitanya mahaprabhu's movement then what happens that workplace itself becomes a temple so what decides it's only the consciousness which decides whether that work is bhakti yoga or not is decided by the consciousness of the person externally we are also working others are also working everything nobody will see the difference between a devotee and, a, and any other person at office internally the difference is there. Well, so go further 27 <coughs> others who are interested in achieving self realization through control of the mind and senses offer the functions of all the senses and of the life breath as oblations into the fire of the controlled mind So I'm sure all of you have read and come. So we will not take that up. So in text 27, the Lord discusses Ashtanga Yoga. The Ashtanga Yoga. What the Lord says that in the body we have ten kinds of air. In this body we have ten kinds of air. Out of which five are major kinds of air and five are minor. What are the major air? Prana, Apana, Vyana, Udana, and Samana. these are them hmm? like sometimes you know in childhood i know my father used to you know say one prayer om pranaya swaha om apanaya swaha om samanaya swaha om ma whatever om brahmane swaha maha nevedyam nevedyam samarpayami he used to say like that and this is the ayer you know we used to worship like that but i didn't understand what he was saying I, he also did not understand <laughs> neither of us understood right but now when you know he is there on the camera if he sees it in bombay then now we all will understand what going on now what we what, what do we say we don't say pranaya apanaya and all that. we have nothing to do with all this air what we are saying oh my dear lord here is the bhoga for your pleasure please accept it as simple as that namo maha adanya krishna prema pradaya please accept it i am your servant please we have we have prepared this please enjoy this prasadam this bhoga so that in the body that 10 kinds of air are five are minor and five major now it is said that by controlling these airs in the body then one can control the mind that is the process of ashtanga yoga and ashtanga yogi controls his mind by controlling the movement of the airs in the body so control of mind is the central point let's not get digressed with the yoga system what is the what are, what are we talking about controlling the mind so the ashtanga yogi controls the mind through the process of ashtanga yoga so the patanjali system which is the system of hatha yoga is mentioned here as to how to control those life airs technically all that is some, some description is given here so when you control that control your mind then that is favorable for getting detached from material life and propad mentions that the goal is pratyag atma there are two types of atma one atma which is which is contaminated with the desire for sense gratification and the other atma which is called as pratyag atma which is atma which is dedicated to self realization and all this ashtanga yoga the entire topic is described in detail in chapter 6 so when we come to chapter 6 we will discuss all that but right now just understand that the ashtanga yogi tries to control the mind through the process of controlling the life as and why does he want to control the mind because he is also wanting self realization the devotee also wants self realization the gnana yogi also wants correct right? 28 having accepted strict vows some become enlightened by sacrificing their possessions and others become enlightened by performing severe austerities by practicing the yoga of eightfold mysticism which is called as the ashta siddhis eightfold mysticism or by studying the vedas to advance in 
transcendental knowledge. So Shri Prabhupada mentions four types of yagyas over here. What are the four types? One is sacrificing the possessions. Second is performing severe austerities. That is second type. Third is by performing Ashtanga Yoga and no? yeah, Siddhi Prapti you will get by that. By following mystic process. Or then fourth is by Jnana. By studying the Vedas. So by, by all this people try to advance in transcendental knowledge. Now we have to understand that all these methods they will definitely elevate us on the path of transcendental knowledge but they have to be only regarded as stepping stones to the final goal. None of this will automatically lead to the ultimate destination but they will all lead us to that destination. They will all lead us as stepping stones. They are stepping stones. The, even a person who is the best Ashtanga Yogi still has to do something delta to achieve what the devotee is anyway achieve. Does it make sense? All these yogis, they will, after they finish perfection in their yoga system, they still have to do a delta process of bhakti to be able to attain love of God. Whereas a devotee does not have to go through all these yoga processes. A devotee doesn't, a bhakta doesn't need to go through jnana yoga, dhyana yoga, ashtanga yoga, mysticism, nothing. All the devotee does is simply serve the Lord and go back to Godhead. If not through the merit quota, through the mercy quota. In India, we have merit quota and mercy quota. Right? Mercy means sifarish, influence. Right? So people who can't get through merit, get through the other way. So even in this bhakti process, it is like that. If if we think that I'll become a pure devotee, then I'll go back to Godhead. It's at least for me, it seems little bit unlikely in this lifetime. Right? But certainly, what we do, we try to execute the orders of our Guru by which we will get mercy. By that mercy, even if our qualification is lagging, the Guru will fill in for that. Chalo, aajau. Apna hai admi. Come. He's my man. No problem. You have served me, but it's fine. I'll compensate. Prabhupada compensates. Of course, we can't take that for granted and not do anything. Because we have to please our spiritual master. And then the mercy flows. So, all these processes which are mentioned here in this verse, they are mere stepping stones to bhakti. And the ultimate goal of Krishna consciousness cannot be automatically attained by any of these processes. What is needed for Krishna consciousness? Mercy. mercy is needed. So, the mercy is absent in all these processes, if you see. There is no mercy element in any of these austerities. Personal endeavor. Huh? Personal endeavor. Right? Personal endeavor. Everything is based on personal endeavor. Hmm? So therefore, if you fail in this process, you are finished. If you succeed, still there is something to be done. And if you fail, you are finished. Whereas in the process of bhakti, there is no nothing called as failure and success is sure. Why? Even if you fail, Vaishnavas will compensate. By mercy quota you will go. That is the power of bhakti. It's a sure shot, easy process to attain transcendental realization. Toronto, you had a question? To some degree you answered the question, but following any, any of these four methods or processes, are they stepping stones or they are impediments to getting to bhakti state? So the, one can get entangled into these things and may never come out. But Depends on whichever we look. If you go to a shopping mall, if you go to a shopping mall, is a staircase an impediment or an opportunity? If you have a lift, then you can you will you'll ask why is staircase required? Why is an escalator required? So you, you can decide how you want to go to the third floor or tenth floor. You can take the staircase and go, or you can take the escalator and go, or you can take the elevator and go. So bhakti yoga is like the elevator. In this elevator, the door closes. So you don't see what's happening. You're, you don't care about what's happening. You just go to your final destination. Whereas what happens to the jnana yogi? He attains step by step by step. First he gets out of the material world, then he goes to Brahman. It's like the escalator. You go to the first floor, then you are watching, oh, there is cosmetics here. You go to the second floor, then you are, you know. And there is a chance of getting digressed in each floor. You went to purchase something else, and you went and purchased something else. Because floor by floor shopping you did. You went to buy a bread maker, and you came with a cricket bat. It's like that. Actually, it can happen like that. In shopping. Correct? 
So whereas what happens? The moment you know that bread maker is available on level 15, you sit inside the lift. It will straight go and bang. You come out. The bread maker is there. You take it. Sit in the lift and go. Home. Like so this, this is just an analogy. Mm-hmm. So bhakti yoga, jnana karma jnana You don't have anything to do with jnan. You don't have to do anything with karma. But you still have all those processes in bhakti directed towards the ultimate goal. So they are only stepping stones for a devotee. Jnana. They are not an absolute end in itself. Is it clear? 29. Still others who are inclined to the process of breath restraint to remain in trance practice by offering the movement of the outgoing breath into the incoming and the incoming breath into the outgoing and thus at last remain in trance stopping all breathing this is a key memory verse for all of you I will joke others curtailing the eating process offer the outgoing breath into itself as a sacrifice thank god for Bhakti Yoga. <laughs> Who wants to follow this process? Outgoing, the outgoing air. Oh, come back. <laughs> oh, incoming air. <laughs> Chant and go back to Godhead. Simple. First of all, I need to understand this verse. Correct. First of all, it takes time to understand this verse. Then what to speak of practicing all these things? But the relief is what? Lord Krishna is saying, Sarva Dharman, he is saying. Ma mekam sharanam raja. Just surrender unto me. That's all. Enjoy. Come back to Godhead. Prabhupada said, chant and be happy. happy. So, so we don't have to go too much into all these things. And actually we must have done all this in a previous life. Okay. Only we have come to this stage. Correct. This is what is mentioned by Devahuti to Kapilamana. Kapilamuni. She mentions this. That these devotees, what is that word? Aho Bhata Swap Pacho Te Gariyan. So in that verse, chanting the name of the Lord. So which means what? Devahuti is telling Lord Kapila that Oh Lord, how glorious are your devotees who are chanting because a person who is chanting has already done all this in the previous lifetime. He has mastered the Vedas, everything. That is why he has come to the last stage of Bhakti. So whenever you get Krishna Bhakti, you have to assume that that is the last cycle of your life. After this, no birth and death. Go back to Godhead. Last few lifetimes, maximum. And then even if one comes back, one comes back on an assignment of the Lord. Just like a criminal also goes to the prison and an IAS officer also goes to the prison. But still there is a difference. You don't laugh at the IAS officer, Indian Administrative Service fellow. Oh, you are in prison. Bad boy. You don't look at him and say like that. Criminals, you are there in a place where criminals are there. You understand? Obviously, he is going on a post. Whereas criminal is going because he stabbed someone. There is still a difference. So like that, a devotee will come back into the material world on an assignment. But Krishna Preshtaya Bhutale. That is why Prabhupada, we say what? Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshtaya. But by the order of, will of Krishna, he has come. Not because of his karma. Like that. So in 29, the process of Hatha Yoga is mentioned, which is controlling airs and reversing the direction of the passage of the air in the body. If any one of you is more interested, wait till the next few chapters. The goal of Hatha Yoga and Pranayama. These are two processes. Hatha Yoga has got a strong component of Pranayama in that. What is the, what is the goal of all this? The goal is, three goals are mentioned. One is to control the senses. Two is to what? To increase the longevity of life. Because an intelligent person wants to go back to Godhead in this very lifetime. But an intelligent person also knows that if I live an ordinary life, then I may die at 60 or 80. So therefore he wants a long life. So the yogi does all this so that he he can he has more time for self-realization. Otherwise he will be subjugated by the laws of Kali Yuga. Which means the average life is 100 years. So you will still find, you know, if you if you read Radhanath Swami Maharaj's uh, book, lot of divine, a lot of paranormal experiences he has seen in the Himalayas. Like that. My mother also used to tell me, you know, she was under one Swami girl in her uh, childhood and nobody knew the age of that person. But some people say that he has been around for 200-300 years like that. So this is possible through the process of yoga because our lifespan is determined by the number of breaths. breaths. The unit of measure is number of breaths, not not the material conception of time. 
so yeah. then by breathing slowly then what's happening you are prolonging your time in the material world like that mm-hmm. so that is the process of this thing. so so to control the senses is the goal second goal is to increase the longevity and the third one is to help advance spiritually three goals out of this now krishna consciousness gets all these three goals anyway controlling senses what happens how do we control senses engaging by engaging the senses in the service of the lord devotees don't eat non prasadam right we eat only prasadam correct we abstain from non prasadam by which we get, we get control over our senses like that then devotee how does devotee get longevity because in this lifetime itself we will go back to the spiritual world which is beyond birth this is old age and death so it's eternal life right for a non devotee death is the end of existence for a devotee death opens the door to eternal life so the devotees don't care for longevity and the third aspect help in spiritual advancement definitely when we chant and hear krishna bhakti is going to come right and many of us have experienced that we may not have be, be paramahamsas but all of us at least have some affection for the lord isn't it which was not there before right because of which we are in the movement today what is keeping us in the movement the attraction for krishna what else isn't it of course and krishna prasad <laughs> so krishna consciousness is transcendental to all the types of sacrifices that are mentioned here because it's a direct service to the lord there is automatic sense control because of prasadam the process is also quick it can be attained in one lifetime one lifetime is we can go back to god no need of complex process and mercy is there which is absent in the other yoga system so we have to remember all this next all these performers who know the meaning of sacrifice become cleansed of sinful reactions and having tasted the nectar of the results of sacrifice they advance towards the supreme eternal atmosphere <coughs> so the purpose of all sacrifice is reiterated here this verse is simply repeating whatever was said earlier what are the purpose of sacrifice control the senses from sense gratification freedom from sinful reaction, reaction number 2 third is transcendental knowledge develop transcendental knowledge jnana and bhakti and fourth is eternal happiness in the spiritual kingdom is it clear want me to repeat that yes yes i realized some of you have lost me okay. so there are four purposes of all sacrifices which are reiterated in this verse control of senses from sense gratification freedom from sinful reaction transcendental knowledge jnana leading to bhakti and fourth is eternal happiness in the spiritual kingdom so that is what is the gist of text 30 mm-hmm. eternal happiness from in the spiritual kingdom okay. 31 Oh best of the kuru dynasty without sacrifice one can never live happily on this planet or in this life what then of the next all these different types of sacrifice are approved by the vedas and all of them are born of different types of work knowing them as such you will become liberated so Lord Krishna is here. Prabhupada is writing in the purport. He is talking about the material engagement, which is what I have drawn here. This loop, which keeps us in the cycle of birth, disease, old age, and death, which is ignorance, avidya, leading to papam or sinful life, and sinful life leading to again coming back to the material life. We will we will explain more of this in a later chapter. or when we do nectar of devotion we will get into deeper things about bijam kutam and all that we will not do it now just understand at a high level that this is a cycle ignorance means what ignorance of what ignorance of who we are and what is our relationship with god that is this ignorance we think that i am we are the body and the goal of life is to enjoy the fruits of our activities and that is what is called as ignorance as long as we do that we will get bound by sinful life and therefore we have to eternally come back into this material world to rot in the cycle of birth this is only and death human life is the only opportunity that offers where we can question this and get out of the cycle of 
but this is old legend time. This is a rare opportunity, one human lifetime. So better give it to Krishna. Don't engage in the same activities which animals are also doing. Ahara Nidra, Kaya Maithunam, eating, sleeping, mating and defending. Everybody is doing that. Nobody is interested thinking about how to get out of the cycle of birth, this is old age and death. So, the role of Vedas is explained in this particular verses, in 31 and 32. What is the role of the Vedas? The Vedas gives us a chance to escape this cycle by talking about four subject matters. What are the four subject matters of the Vedas? Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. Now you may say, how does the Vedas help us escape the cycle of birth, this is old age and death by talking about Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha? How does it work? That is explained in these, in these sections. Dharma gives what? Knowledge. Artha. Dharma gives? Artha. How do we know that Dharma gives Artha? Yes, it also gives knowledge. But first it gives Artha. Dharma gives Artha. How? All of you heard also, no? many people who had come to, you know, the Epping Bhagavad Sapta. What's his name? Nanda Kishar Prabhu. Nanda Kishar Prabhu is also mentioning this point. Dharma gives Artha. Hmm? Religion gives what? Economic development. Religion gives economic development. How religion gives economic development? How? What is the, what has got religion to do with economic development? Economic development comes from the corporate offices. It comes from using the state of the art software. Suppose someone argues like that. How will you counter that argument? No! Economic development doesn't come by management policies. Neither does it come by use of state of the art software. How will you argue? Again, simple example. A company is dealing with apples. It is establishing a nice supply chain model for how to supply apples. Right? But where does the apple come from? Tree. From tree. Where does the tree come from? Huh? Earth. Where does the earth come from? Beyond that the scientists cannot answer. Correct? Where does oxygen come from? Scientists cannot answer. How Lord has packed an entire banyan tree inside a small seed? Scientists cannot answer. And we are expecting that that science, which can't answer any of the basic questions of life, is very advanced science. Think about it. Right? So the Vedas give a very simple answer. They say, Annat Bhavati Bhutani Parjanyad Anna Sambhava. We have seen that passage many times in our Bhakti Vriksha program. Hmm? How food grains come? Because the earth, Krishna has, Lord has already made some part of the earth as fertile land. Lord Krishna has arranged for rains to pour on that fertile land. Someone has sowed already the seed inside that fertile land. When did the first seed come? Seed come from apple, apple come from seed. When did the first one come? Chicken came first or egg came first? Something has to come first, no? At the end of the day. So if you go back, then you will understand that Lord, when Lord Krishna says, when you follow religion, when you do yagyas, there will be rainfall. When there is abundant rainfall, there will be no scarcity of natural products and vegetables and fruits and food grains. There is no scarcity. When there is no scarcity, we don't have to work like donkeys in the office to be able to afford those products. As we said, going forward, Apple products like iPod etc. are going to become more cheaper. cheaper. But Apple is going to become more cheaper. expensive. We can afford iPod but we cannot afford to eat apples every day. Correct? Why? Because there is no scarcity of iPods in the market. But there is scarcity of genuine apples in the market. Sometimes you taste the apple, you are thinking is it apple or what? There is no taste. Correct? So that is what is getting scarce. And people are thinking we are progressing in life. This is nonsense. We are actually going back. Kali Yuga is going to get worse and worse. So, by following the process of dharma, by doing yajna, then there will be abundance, no scarcity. So, there will be automatically economic development. Okay, so from the dharma comes artha. But what happens? When artha comes, what happens? When everything is very nicely abundant, then first class we want to eat. We want to eat apples, fruit, badam, pishta, everything, milk. First class we want to eat. And then what happens? When you eat, then what do you want after that? When the belly is heavy, then the genitals start wanting something, right? So, what happens? Artha leads to calm. Hmm? When we have Jaruratsa Jada Paisa, then we will do a lot of wonderful bedroom. And when bedroom is wonderful, then what desire will come in the heart? Isn't it? 
so what will happen from dharma you get artha because of money you see many times just because of money some people start doing all kinds of nonsense activities in their life just because they have money right so that is the tendency of a human being when everything is very comfortable when there is no problem then the mind goes towards sex desire so dharma leads to artha artha leads to kama now what happens see the beauty now now i have done dharma i have got all the arts uh, first class i am enjoying now in my life you know first class 10 bedroom kitchen every day different bedroom enjoy till when you can till when till when only till the body cooperates when the body starts losing body cannot cooperate with all the money in the world we cannot enjoy one cannot enjoy sex one cannot even enjoy a mango one can afford mangoes but one cannot eat mangoes why because there is diabetes <laughs> is this is the truth of life so the body deteriorates and dwindles so dharma artha leads to kam but kam cannot be enjoyed because the body does not permit you to do that kam despite all the artha that you have in your life therefore what happens you say oh my god is there any way that i don't get this body again and then you start looking at moksha liberation this whole cycle is there a karmi goes through but a devotee doesn't go through this cycle so the vedas is for the people who are slow you slowly understand you go through this process eventually you will come to bhakti only after all this research and method, research methodology right there is a devotee straight away hears this and takes to the process so that cycle is given here hmm? we'll just finish in 5 minutes okay also in these verses dharma prescribes different types of sacrifices based on the modes of material nature hmm? sacrifices are different different sacrifices based on the different different modes of material nature so there are sacrifice of breath control which are mentioned there is sacrifice through yagya there is satis- sacrifice through sharing material wealth so many different types of sacrifice you can read it you know, offline now superficially these sacrifices appear different but they are all born of various consciousness only ultimately all of them lead to transcendental knowledge so the theme for today is sacrifice leads to transcendental knowledge so whereas prabhupad after writing all this in the purports after all this vedas dharma artha kama moksha this slow cycle on slow cycle of realization of the absolute truth prabhupad says that life of krishna consciousness gives the transcendental knowledge immediately from day one we get this transcendental knowledge in krishna consciousness hmm? how does that work from day one now many of you who have been part of the bhakti vriksha program did you not get the knowledge from day one transcendental knowledge we got from day one right that knowledge we we might have got in a sequence of programs but right from day one we didn't say that okay let's all follow religion let's all follow now graduate to artha now let us all do kama now let us all proceed towards liberation did we have our programs like that no our programs was spot on how to get out of the material world right from day one right so that transcendental knowledge was given right from day one in different different stages for example first we understand what we understand the eternality of existence that is the first knowledge we understand that we are not the body we are the soul and the soul is eternal we understand that we are, therefore we understand but because we are eternal a soul must, we must work for the long term and not the short term second we understand the inevitable nature of birth disease old age and death we are eternal but we still can't control birth this is old age and death as long as we got this body right? we understand that third we understand that human life is very rare so all this is transcendental knowledge right fourth we understand that happiness in this material world is temporary and relative it is not absolute we under we saw that also in our ssr class right then we understand that what is the happiness formula happiness is equal to what number of desires fulfilled divided by number of desires correct if you put it in a mathematical formula number of desires fulfilled depend divided by number of desires the materialistic people they attack the numerator they try to fulfill their material desires and the devotees attack the denominator we try to 
control. Control our material desires by channelizing it in Krishna's service. So this is an easier process where you don't have to work like a donkey, you know, to be able to afford more and more in this world. Simplify your life. Be happy with what you have, and you'll be happy. Otherwise, if you want to go more and more, there is no end to it. Then. Right? So this this is transcendental now. We understand the happiness formula. We understand and realize the power of bhakti. All of us have realized that sitting in this room. The power of bhakti. Whoever is chanting, all of us have realized how it works. Hmm? The power of bhakti in removing sins. The power of bhakti in removing the sinful desire from the heart. The power of bhakti in enabling us to develop good qualities. Right? We have all realized that by the process of chanting. The power of bhakti in cultivate, cultivating detachment from material things. We have seen that work in our life. The power of bhakti in giving love for Lord Krishna. We have seen that. Right? So, pratyaksha avagamam dharmyam susukam kartum bhagaya. Direct evidence by sense perception. Right? 9.2. Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna tells this. Right? And then, not only that, and then extending ourselves to society. Not only doing our sadhana, but going out and preaching. So, all these are symptoms of bhakti. All this we are anyway getting this transcendental knowledge. Not only we keep the transcendental knowledge with us, but we also then go out and share it with the world. So, that is the gist of verse 32 and 31 and 32. Right? Now, the last verse for today. 33. Poor chastiser of the enemy, the sacrifice performed in knowledge is better than the mere sacrifice of material possessions. So, any sacrifice which is performed in the knowledge which we said just now. So many things we discussed. Such a sacrifice is better than merely sacrificing your material possessions. After all, O son of Pritha, all sacrifices of work end or culminate in transcendental knowledge. So the culmination of all sacrifices is in transcendental knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada in his purport writes, there are two divisions of sacrificial activities depending on the level of consciousness of the person. Two types of sacrifices he mentions. Karma Kanda which is fruitive activities and Jnana Kanda which is knowledge in pursuance of the absolute truth. Hmm? Two types of activities. Hmm? And Prabhupada is concluding that sacrifice performed in knowledge lead one to higher goal. Like that. Hmm? Higher platforms of transcendental knowledge. Hmm? Like <coughs> so, in these verses Lord Krishna, what, what the Lord is effectively telling Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra is, he is saying that he is concluding these discussions on sacrifices. The whole section of today was on sacrifices. So he is concluding the discussion of sacrifices in this set of verses and then he is beginning his summary of the whole transcendental knowledge because the transcendental knowledge topic was divided into four sections. Today we did the third section. So in the next section he is going to now summarize that transcendental knowledge. How? He's, Lord Krishna is going to tell us, I have told you that transcendent knowledge is very important. I have told you that sacrifices will lead to this transcendental knowledge. But how do you cultivate this transcendental knowledge? Who do you have to approach to get this transcendental knowledge? He is going to explain that in the next section. So the homework for whoever is reading and coming is Bhagavad Gita 4.34 to 4.42. Many of you who have not even noted this, I am pretty sure that you may forget it. What was the verses? 34. If you can't remember it, from wherever we left till the end of the chapter. So you don't have to note it.